Yo, what's up everybody? JP checking in, man. RespectMyReason.com. We're coming at you guys live from the 2024 June edition of Flower Expo, okay? Today's journey is brought to you guys by Tree, by Bada Bloom. All right, we got a very special guest. We got Michael Mario Naro. Naro. Marionero. Marionero. I said it all wrong, but we've been getting it right no matter what. And today, we're going to talk some Terps. All right. We have a series called Terp Check, you everybody. And today we're going to Terp Check a Terp Master here in Massachusetts, okay? So, Michael, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you being a guest on the show. Thank you. I wanted to talk a little bit about your brand, and I wanted to sample some of these Terps. All right. So, bada boom. How did that come about? Well, first off, let's take it back. Who are you? How did you get into this? Yeah. And what is Bada Bloom? Let's go there. All right. So my name is Michael Marinaro. Um, I got into the, the, the legal sector of this market about four or five years ago now. Um, I have been a mass medical patient for about 13 years. Wow. Um, so, you know, I saw the rollout happen with a lot of those licenses and, you know, really just getting deterred from the industry to, to have a chance to get into it. Um, and then once that social equity program came about years later, you know, I started to search for properties and trying to make this thing real. Okay. Um, really... Got accepted into the program and we just hit it hard, you know. We started, we found a property, it was, uh, you know, very far and few to find and we just started going for our licenses, started raising money and capital and, you know, here we are today about two and a half years later and we have a building, we have a property, we've done, you know, construction improvements and just making to that final build out, final license is where we're at right now. Absolutely, that's exciting, man. You know, from the outside of the industry to getting in it to building something in it, <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, the, obviously, the capital is the biggest hindrance in this industry right yeah. now and, and has been, uh, especially for smaller operators. So, you know, that's really the only thing that's holding us back. We have a, a killer team uh, and it's really, you know, it, we've progressed a lot with our brand. We really got a lot of cool things coming online right now. And, you know, you kind of got to pivot for what the market wants. And we did actually fall into a retail store recently mm -hmm. in, in a prime location. So we're we're moving forward with that as well, so. Is that an RMR exclusive? Do that, people know that? that it will be. <laughs> oh, damn, we got an RMR exclusive in the building. I didn't know that that was happening. We bought a cool boom retail? We got some cool stuff going on. Wow. So we had the delivery that we were doing out of our location, which is our cultivation yeah, yeah. and manufacturing, but I uh, recently just got our approvals for this place, and I just got my first set of plans last week, so working through some architecturals and, uh, Hopefully, we'll get this place built out before the end of the year. That's so exciting. Congratulations, yeah. man. That's so awesome. And we'll help fund our, our cultivation. So we've kind of just knocked it down a little bit for our raise, and we're going to get two of our rooms built off the bat uh, just to save a little bit of capital right now. So that's yeah. our goal. I mean, we are uh, just about to pull the trigger and just pull this grow out. I mean, we'll have it built in three to four months. Well, we've had our permits for, for a while, and, you know, we have done small improvements and getting there. All my drainage has been in the ground, and, you know, we're, we're building things out. The hash room is on site. You know, we got our panels there. And there we go. It's just, you know, pull a couple more triggers. I mean, it's a brand new build, so we got to do sprinklers. I mean, we got to do a lot of yeah, yeah. things that really to make us compliant, which... What people uh, don't understand about cannabis is that just getting to the point where you can start growing weed requires money. Oh, yeah. I mean, my sprinkler system's 100 grand. That's so. And awesome. it's only a 5,000 square foot canopy. The building's approximately 14. Well, you know, you got to sprinkle our whole building. But for instance, just that one step, I mean, just the, the plans alone, like, yeah, yeah. I spent my life standing on a piece of paper just to start this entire thing. That's crazy. That was the jump to really get this thing going. It's like, you need, you need a plan, you know, you got to have building plans. You got to see what you're building and designing. And we really built something that's pretty amazing in my eyes. I mean, a lot of people talk about energy efficiency, this and that, but we really are driving something that uh, is a system that should, you know, really be for the future of growing in cannabis. Yeah. And well, and, and as with most most businesses, it's growth over time, right? Yeah. So you have the build out, then the growth, well, compliance and paper, and then the build out, and then the growing and the fun and then the weed stuff. <laughs> for you guys, where where are you guys at currently, right? How much? Is there an ETA for when things will be? Uh, I mean, if the money hit my account tomorrow morning, we literally have this build in three to four months. I mean, my contractors are already on board. I mean, we have everybody signed up. It's just when the funding hitting the account so we can actually finish this build out. Um, so, I mean, we do own our property, which has, you know, 
seem to help us now if we want to work start working alone but you know as you go to a cannabis loan industry you're looking at 18 to 20 percent which is just it's too much yeah yeah. And regardless of any way you look at it what uh, what your projections are going to be i mean yeah the, the, shift, lo- the shift in that is always it's got to be reasonable so you know we you know worked out how we can kind of you know negotiate a deal and kind of come to a compromise and you know there's obviously equity available too right? yeah, yeah willing to put something together to make it work you know we got- I, I love how in this space has teamwork as a requirement you might get screwed right that's cannabis right now right <laughs> that's the immaturity of this industry right but it requires teamwork right what is one of your favorite parts about the team that you've put together at bottle bloom because when i come here and i'm from somewhere else but when i ask around or walking through with you guys it's very clear that you've got a you've got a team of people a, a community yeah. that are behind you guys and helping you get started and become successful yeah i mean uh i mean from construction side you know i got my our, my cousin um is actually a, he's my cousin Vinny. he happens to be my cousin Vinny, but um he's our project manager so you know okay. he's a huge asset to the team just to make it through those types of construction points with someone that you know that's in-house that you can trust in that point so you know going from him i mean our our major asset is tara so you know tara hopper is our uh, founder as well, about a bloom, and you know she is an attorney as well. She's worked for you know large company in, the, in this industry and has seen you know how uh, I mean horrendous that it can be at that level, and really understanding that you know craft cannabis and and actually giving consumers a path to having something that in my eyes is even smokable flour yeah. is something that you would only want to be involved in. So yeah, that's kind of you know her momentum of going forward in this cannabis industry. And she is a powerhouse for us, you know, as an attorney and compliance. I mean, I don't know where I would do without her. That was the foundational you part know? of your business is yeah. the paperwork. I and- mean, you have to make it through a town process. So it's one thing to get a license, right? Anyone to go get a license, you can pay someone to go get a license. But you need to make it through the town to be able to get the license. Because if they don't give you an approval, you can't get a license. Yeah. In most of the spots, there really isn't, I mean, you can find cultivation spots, right? Maybe out Western Mass, but, you know, we strategically put our cultivation in where we are. I mean, if a town next to where I grew up in, yeah, that happens to be banned for cannabis, which is where my social record arrest came from. Wow. But, uh, you know, we went to the town next door and, you know, we have our delivery model out of that business. Yeah. My delivery model doesn't work in Western Massachusetts where we're sitting right now. It's just, it's too far away. It's, you know, it's not as that tight knit residential neighborhoods that you're really looking for. You know, you have yeah. the radius or that model doesn't work. I mean, we want to grow our cannabis. We're going to produce our, you know, amazing hat and we want to deliver it to your front door as men, as, you know, as well as many other products. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of like our, what our model's been from the beginning and doing that really matters about location. Let's talk about what goes into making what you qualify as good premium cash products, right? You're an artist, right, in, yeah. in many ways. And so making this requires science. It's like cooking, it's ingredients, it's time, it's patience, it's calculations. Then there's whipping it this way and whipping it this way. And then I think you can flip it and spin it like you're cooking eggs. There's, there's a lot you can do with hash. I'm having fun with it, right? Right. But I'm, I'm interested in learning a little bit about what makes your hash and your art special in your eyes. I mean, specifically, you know, we're, we're soil grown cannabis guys, whether we're growing indoor or outdoor. Look at, uh, this is an indoor facility in Massachusetts, but you know, we're, we're growing in soil. And I believe that, you know, that's how you're going to get that true expression of the plant. Um, obviously genetics and pheno hunting is one of the big, you know, that, that's how you need to find what you're going to use for your extracts. Because if you don't have that, your, your extract is not going to come through. And yeah. you also do have to think about production as well. I mean, we are somewhat of a production facility. I mean, some yield, uh, some, you know, strangers don't yield whatsoever. Are we still going to carry some of those? And we will have limited release drops for them, you know? Yeah. But we're also, and have been searching for genetics for years and years. So, you know, we're bringing in our staple of genetics into this facility that we know that does well with those genetics. So, Absolutely. you know, it's really starting from there. And um, let's talk about that curation. What are some of these genetics that you're excited about? What's going to be in those initial runs? For sure. Uh, so, I mean, we've got, you know, we have such a big lineup. I mean, we have uh, some old school things and just old school OGs. We've got some old school sours. Um, I, there's a lot of local breeders that I've been working with. Um, people under the shared genetics, I found some fire in this stuff. 
uh, fully cooked seed company recently. Been finding some stuff. Wow. We obviously got a bunch of aficionado stuff. I mean, Leo's been awesome. He's gave us nothing but good deer. So I got the fire in the staple. Um, so, you know, we're just, we're bringing in a lot of different genetics from across the board, different breeders and just people that, you know, we can stand behind, you know, as a breeder. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that we have the right genetics in our facility. And yeah, we want to highlight them as well because they're the ones that bred that plant. Absolutely. That I can wash this into because without them, it's really not, it's searching through our it's a, It goes back to that team mentality. You have to have those, that teammate in that section be great at what they do in order for you to be at that top level as well, right? right? I mean, we've popped a lot of seeds and there's, you can't lie, there's a lot of junk. Yeah. There's a lot of junk in these seeds and there's things that, I mean, you gotta sort through them. That's one of the things that's, you know, I think. Yeah, yeah. But being the grower and the extractor, that single source, I mean, understanding the plant and how it actually extracts is one of the biggest methods. I mean, Absolutely. You, you can, it's use that for your seed oil, I think, so you know what you're actually searching for. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So I appreciate getting to check on the history and the come up on this turpituation you have over here, right? You've got an awesome brand. I love the team. The industry and community is behind you guys. Now we've got to get into a little bit of the products, right? So in Terp Check, we usually check other people's Terps. I'd like to check yours, right? I usually walk up on you guys and I'm like, Terp Check, what you dabbing on, right? And so let's do it. What are you dabbing on today? What is today's Terp Check? All right. What do we got? Uh, so let's go with the, we'll go with the little indoor we got here. This is actually some, uh, this is a little bit of a blend here. All I've, right. I've been feeding one thing in our R&D hardcore right now, so whenever, uh, Whenever I got some space left in ripping out males, I just throw in a bunch of stuff that I've had in my staple for a while. So I only have so many card in it over here. Wait, let me go. In here today, we uh, we got some great high GMO. There's a little bit of there, and then we do have some Las Vegas purple banana. That Las Vegas purple banana yesterday was a good time. That was an outdoor one that we smoked as well. So I do have some of that here. But this uh, this here is is the indoor. And oh, wee! Can you hold it up to the camera so they can see some of the color? Yeah. I mean, this is this is actually some from our outdoor run this past season here. This is that Las Vegas purple banana. I mean, it's just uh, this stuff is really nice. Keep what? All banged, all grabbed. What do you think? <laughs> but this is all. Uh, Crest frozen, uh, majority of this is full spectrum. There's a few that are just 79 to 159, uh, um, or 160 rather, but- um, Phenomenal. The flavor is true to the different strains that make up the strains, right? Right, right. I mean, the majority of these strains were harvested around 60 days as well. Um, you know, obviously our genetics are ranging from eight weeks, 56 to, you know, not too far past that of me for what we have right now. I mean, we're really, we're utilizing <laughs> our light technology to kind of uh, drive the plants as well. Yeah. I have a, like a mixed spectrum, controlled spectrum light. I've uh, been utilizing this for about eight years now. So we got some cool data on kind of driving the plant and, you know, to what I think increasing yield and increasing terpenes uh, from different types of light and different types of, uh, of, of your, you know, heart. Yeah, yeah. I both, so. There's different, people grow... A s different ways for commercial rosin. Commercial means larger scale and also at scale in some ways, not just larger scale. Well, sure. It means at, like, it could be a uh, Costco size scale. It could be regional stores like uh, In N Out, right? right. Like the burger. What's a, what's a regional Massachusetts uh, chain or a brand? Uh, for cannabis. For cannabis. Um, I mean, there's probably quite a few. I mean, you're talking like more like multi state operator or? Sure. I mean, obviously, the majority are here. Truly is not here anymore, but, okay. you know, Cresco's been here, Columbia's been here. Cure so those, for those kinds of orders, you got to have thousands of units oh, yeah, ready sure. to go. For sure. Right? For sure. Yeah. So, I'm, in terms of what you're going to be bringing to market, what are you most excited about? What, what should these retailers at Flower Expo, when they hear about a bloom, and they think, okay, what is going to be the best of the best from the owner? From the from the artist, what is going to be at the top? So we have our brand. Uh, it's actually called Potenza Reserva. Uh, Potenza is the region that my family is from in Italy. So 
that's kind of going to be our top notch high end rosin limited edition. Like, you know, we'll be doing special drops of certain strains that we have. Sick. Um, you know, a bunch of really different flavors, you know, yep. we're just something for, you know, terpenes and, you know, even more with the plant flavonoids of what we know of what actually is in there. What's causing that, that flavor to really get out in that plant? Because we've seen some pretty great expressions and unique expressions. Uh, we see a lot of the same genetics around at a lot of these facilities and it's like we don't want to have our consumers just all smoking the same thing yeah are we there yet not necessarily you know it's still so new of an industry that most consumers have no idea what they're even smoking yeah they're not that it's always so thc driven then it becomes terpene driven people just lose track of how many different strains there are right there's got to be some more focus some more focus being put on strain individuality right and the fit families of strains and things like that um like i appreciate you being a guest on our show today it was an honor to get to know you and the story thank you it's been a definitely a pleasure dabbing all this hatch the last few the last few months uh, since we've met and i very much appreciate what you bring to the industry thank my friends thank you um you guys we're here at the flower expo we're live on the trade show floor i'm joey jp this is michael Ma mario naro make sure you guys check out bada bloom and stay tuned for the next time we interview them right around the time when they're about to launch. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. We out. Peace.